thank you for uh, just your goodness and just the many good things that you do extend to us and uh, that are present and in our lives, even things that we uh, take advantage and take uh, and, and just not even process and, and realize uh, that they're from you. And so we thank you for your goodness. We're thankful for today as we uh, look forward this week to uh, Thanksgiving a time where we're supposed to reflect on the things we're thankful for. And so, uh, Father, I just want to just offer thanksgiving to you and just let you know that we are thankful for the, the things that you do for us in our lives and how you act and you're part of everything that we've got going on. Um, Father, just in this time, you know, just all the different prayer requests and uh, things we mentioned, just, uh, just things going on in life and people's lives, the turmoil, um, sickness, health, cancer, um, eyes, mouth, throat, uh, just all these things that are uh, going on and that ail us and distract us and uh, come against us. Uh, Father, in all these things, we just ask for you to be a part uh, and be in the middle of and uh, for you to work only the way that you can work. Uh, we pray for your glory to come out of all these situations. We pray for uh, the focus to be on you. We pray for people to come to know you through just the different trials and things that come against us and the people that we know and the people that we love. Um, so we, we just ask for you to comfort um, and just be in the midst of everything that's going on. Um, God, as we uh, begin to look at your word and the truth of your word today, I just pray that you be with us in this in this time. Father, be in the middle of our conversation here. Uh, Father, speak into our hearts and help us to see the truth of your word. Uh, Father, I pray that it would change our hearts and our lives. Uh, God, and, and just draw us closer to you and motivate our heart more uh, to want to follow you. Our fathers, be with us in this time, and we thank you so much for Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, get a different app. It's going right now? Okay. Great. Um, so today, we are uh, still finding ourselves in the book of First Peter. Uh, we're in chapter 4. And uh, last week we made it pretty much through verse 11. Um, and so this week we're going to pick up in verses 12 um, and kind of start reading through there. Um, last week, as we read, um, it's in us. If you got sub sub sections in your Bible, uh, maybe maybe some of the versions that you have will have subsections. Uh, the NASB. Uh, that, I, that I've got here says uh, keep fervent in your love. Uh, the NASB says living for God was kind of the section we just wrapped up. Um, and a lot of uh, reminder in those uh, sections, uh, the, and we've kind of processed through the last couple of weeks, of what it looks like for us to live out our faith in the midst of things that are going on around us. Um, and so as we go in here again, it's going to be that same type of thought. Peter, as we uh, walk through in this subsection, if you've got one, uh, in the uh, NIV says, suffering for being a Christian. Uh, and then the NASB and my, uh, this other one says, share the sufferings of Christ. Um, so so this just this idea that we're probably fixing to walk in is both of them a uh, key in on the idea of suffering. Um, it's going to be something that we're going to be looking at as we kind of walk through here. And this morning as I was kind of going over this, the Lord just really laid on my heart. Uh, we're going to do things maybe a little bit different this morning. Um, we'll, we'll talk some about how it applies to us. Uh, but bigger picture, I couldn't get a guy off my mind named Richard Wormbrand. Um, he's over a ministry called Voice of the Martyrs, uh, which you might have heard of before. Um, uh, he's got a book, um, and you can, you can go get this book. It used to be free. Uh, you just simply go to their website, and you request it, and they'll mail it to you. Um, I'm pretty sure it's free. Um, so it, the... The website's Voice of the Martyr. I think it's vom.org, maybe. Um, but I would highly recommend, um, as we, especially as we look at some of this here, um, and you can holler at me again later. Uh, but go check out this book that he he was a uh, in I think the 40s and 50s. He was uh, in a communist country. He was arrested um, and severely persecuted um, because of his faith. And so his uh, book is called Tortured for Christ, and it walks through just his the trials and tribulations that he faced when he was in uh, this prison, and then also details stuff that happened with people that were he was in prison with, 
Uh, and I'm talking about extremely powerful, powerful testimony uh, of people. And as What's we, his, name? his name's Richard Wormbrand, um, and his voice of the martyrs. Um, but as we read, as I read through this just this morning, just really kind of just chewing on it, just his name kept coming to my mind. Um, and I mean, just not to get off of it, but we're talking about suffering and suffering for the name of Christ is what we're going over in these verses here is kind of what the focus is going to be. And we've been talking about suffering on and off since chapter 2, verse 13. We've talked about suffering and what it looks like to suffer. And um, I mean, definitely it's evident here um, again in these verses, but uh, I don't want to miss the big picture of, uh, of truly suffering for Christ. Um, and I don't want to shortchange some of the depiction and some of what I feel like Peter has on his heart here um, by reducing it down to um, that we might be mildly inconvenienced if we give up some of our rights uh, to love people how Christ would want us to love people. Um, because that is a type of suffering for us. You follow, like to give up some of our rights, you know, because that's what you have to do. You have to go swallow your pride and say, hey, um, in order for me to truly love somebody the way Christ would want to, I might not be able to get what I want. I might have to give up something that I want. Um, and that's a form of suffering for us, uh, a type. Um, but I don't want to shortchange that. And so I want to read uh, some excerpts from this other book uh, that the guys with the Voice of the Martyrs teamed up with the guys from D.C. Talk and made a book called Jesus Freaks. And it's uh, some examples of people who are truly Jesus freaks. And so I want to look at some of that today. Um, anyways, just to kind of preface everything. Uh, but I want to, I want to pick up in verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 12 of 1 Peter. I want to read through a couple verses. So if you've got your Bible, you can follow along. 1 Peter 4, 12 says this, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you, for your testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree to which you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that so that also at the revelation of his glory you may rejoice with exultation. If you were reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of the glory and of God rests on you. Make sure that none of you suffers as, as a murderer or a thief or evildoer or troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be ashamed, but is to glorify God in his name. I want to stop there. Sorry, it's a little bit hard. I kind of get choked up as I'm reading it um, because of some of these the things. I spent a lot of time a couple years ago like really uh, pouring a lot of time over like this book here, the book that I was just telling you about. Spent a lot of time reading that, and I truly believe that these uh, saints of the faith, these martyrs that people were killed for their faith, that they would cling on to verses like this as they were going through their persecution. When it says that no matter what comes against you, don't look at it as some strange thing, but rejoice. Um, and so I, I, I believe that some of these saints uh, would have remembered verses like this in the middle of, uh, some of the persecution. So it kind of chokes me up a little bit, and I apologize for that. Um, I want to kind of walk through, though, just a little bit about what's going on, and then I want to read some stuff. So uh, chapter 4, verse 12 says, uh, Beloved, dear friends, uh, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you which comes upon you for your testing as though some strange thing were happening to you. Uh, what are some thoughts? What are some of the things that we uh, see there in the text. Was it to be expected that as we're trying to grow closer to him, we're going to have to suffer in order to be more like him? That's right. Amen. That's, that's on, on point. That's good. What are some, some other things that we see there? Do we see anything else? We're no 
no longer on the world's side. When we gave our heart and put our trust in Jesus Christ, we changed teams. Mm -hmm. Our flesh is still on the other team. We still live in a world that is consumed by the other team. We gave our heart to Jesus. We change teams. And that's why the fiery trials come. Because the world persecuted Jesus, as he talks earlier in the passage. Mm -hmm. Because the world persecutes Jesus and all the righteousness that he stands for. Because we've now changed teams. We too now are in direct line of fire. Amen. And that's where the persecution comes through. And that's where Peter and John and in John's writings talks about make sure that you're being persecuted for righteousness sake. <coughs> Meaning, don't pry into someone else's business. Make sure that these fiery trials that you're going through are because you're living a righteous life. Mm -hmm. Not because of your own mistakes and your own flesh. Amen. Mm -hmm but because you choose to obey God. Then you go through the fiery trials. Then your friends make fun of you or talk bad about you behind your back. Mm -hmm. Then people slander you because you want to speak righteously. Because you want to live righteously. Mm -hmm. So don't be surprised. You need to be prepared for the fiery trials. Man, Danny, he's got, I mean, that's right here, smack dab is right in the middle of my life right now. And he's saying, Curtis, you're learning. You're realizing you must expect this to happen because of my sake, because of my name's sake. You're going to be persecuted. The other side of that is, if you can honestly look at your life and go, you know, I really don't feel any persecution. Things are pretty good. You need to be careful. Mm -hmm. That's an indicator that you're not, you're missing things that God, God wants to do through you in your life. And maybe blend it in too much. Right. See, we live in a world, again, of flesh, of sin. When we, when the Spirit, when we decide to let Jesus into our life, which is when we say, Jesus, we believe in you, come live in my heart. We're asking for the Spirit to come into our life. And now it's a battle against the flesh. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we now, again, we're on the other team. We've got to expect those trials to come through. Mm -hmm. If we don't have the trials, if we're not being persecuted, we either, one, don't know what persecution is, we don't understand, and there's many, many ways that it manifests itself in our life, or we're really not doing much for the kingdom. Maybe we're being very selfish Christians. Maybe we're still, because our, we gave our, our heart to Jesus, we have salvation through Jesus because we put all our trust in Jesus, but our flesh controls our life. Therefore, we don't suffer persecution much because we live according to our flesh. Amen, it's true. We're supposed to make a choice to live according to the Spirit because the flesh doesn't want to honor God and honor Jesus. Mm-hmm. Nothing in our flesh does. Don't be fooled. So it's a two-sided coin there where if we're walking in righteousness and we choose, you know what? I don't have to pay that guy as much as I'm going to because I could probably get away with it. Like in a business setting, like for me, I choose to pay more. I choose to pay what I'm supposed to, even if, even if he doesn't know I should. I'm paying him according to what I know to be truth. I can get away with paying him a little less because he's not smart enough to know. But in my heart and in God, he knows. Mm -hmm. So that's a choice that I have to make to walk in the Spirit and to live and trust in him or in myself, in my flesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. One of the things I've enjoyed about Peter is, you know, he's all geared about the same thing, but he goes back and he keeps bringing back the same thing. Because in 1 Peter chapter 1, in verse 6, it says, In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, 
may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Which is Ooh. Yeah, and so the proof. He's, yeah. not, he's not saying he's not saying I'm proving that I'm faithful. No. I'm not proving that I'm faithful to Tad. He's saying the process of being proof. That's the right. process of going through a fiery trial is what proves us where the where he takes and he puts the gold into the fire. And all the all the inequitable materials burn off of it. Mm-hmm. You look at it like proofreading. You know, when you're proofreading, you're taking out all the errors and all the the wrong right. punctuation at the end. You're making it correct. Right. Mm-hmm. It's a process okay. going through, and that's what the trial is about. God uses that trial of our persecution, the fiery trial. He uses <coughs> that to purify our hearts. Thank you. He uses that to take us where, you know what, we want to serve God, but if we're honest in our heart, we also want to serve ourselves and serve flesh. Through that process, it makes us less selfish, and it teaches us that we need God. Amen. Amen. There is no middle road. Amen. There is no middle ground. Amen. Amen. A uh, lot, lot of really, really good points there. Um, you, uh, Donna bringing up the First Peter uh, 1, 6, and 7. Um, it is is really fantastic, uh, Donna, that you keyed in on that. Um, the Lord shows you that um, because that's exactly what Peter's talking about here is this idea of this fiery trial. Don't be surprised at this fiery trial. He just talked about in First Peter 1, 6, and 7 that there's going to be a fiery trial, exact same type of trial. He's going to come on us, and it is going to be a proof for our, for our faith, just like what Curtis is saying. It's a process we're going to go through. Um, it's going to refine us and, and make us into this image of who he's called us to be. And exactly like Curtis is saying also is that if we're not, um, if you're not going through a type of trial in your life because of Christ, and not because of something else he said, not because of your own consequence for your own choice, your own action, you can all, we can all get drawn into drama or conflict or whatever because we're choosing to make choices that rebel against him. He's not talking about that. He's talking about things that we go through because We've chosen to do what He's called us to do. When we go through those type of things, it, it does, it molds us and transforms us and draws us more into His image. And it is that process of sanctification, being made holy, uh, that we're, where we're chiseled and chipped away um, and made into His image. And it's, it's, a, it's a battle. Um, you know, you have the, the, the spirit is, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is strong. Um, and it's just a continual, continual battle. And now we know why when we hear, we've always heard how the, why the wicked prosper. Why is it in this world wicked men prosper? They lie and cheat people to prosper, and they do. They, they become successful. They get away with it. God lets them live that way. It's because we were never intended to prosper in this world. This life was not intended because of the sin it was never intended by God for us to prosper that way in the ways of this world. That's why Jesus said, you are not of the world. He said, be in the world, not of the world. We were never intended to prosper. So people ask, I mean, my wife used to ask me, well, why do good things happen to good people and, and or bad things happen to good people and good things happen to evil people? Why do the evil prosper? It's because they're living in a world system that allows them to prosper more that doesn't beat them up over it. But when you give your heart to Jesus and you change teams, you got to understand you're still living in the game. Although you've given your heart to Jesus and you and now you want to follow God's way, you're still playing in a worldly game. It's not designed. God doesn't want you to prosper in a worldly game unless it's for His call, for His purpose, right. which is usually had to do with saving someone. Mm-hmm. One of his children. Mm-hmm. He wants to use it to glorify himself through our life. Mm-hmm. That's right. And that's why the wicked prosper mm-hmm. so abundantly when you look across the world. You look at all these people that you know in your heart don't serve God, mm-hmm. but they prosper. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. God's using it all for his purpose in some way, shape, or form to draw people to know him. Um, a lot of truth um, that we see in there, and even as he starts that uh, that verse, uh, verse twelve, he says, "Beloved, 
uh, you know, dear friends, it's, it's like, you know, I have this deep love. I really want you to get your mind around what I'm fixing to say and take it to heart. Uh, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing as though some strange thing were happening to you. It's, it's not, as Katie was saying, it's not something that uh, should be foreign to you. Uh, and like Curtis was also saying earlier, the Lord's you know, speaking to him, is that it, if you're walking through your life, guys, and, and there isn't some type of turmoil or conflict about should I do this, should I choose this, should I watch this, should I, whatever it has to do with the gospel and the kingdom, um, then, then really you should really maybe take this to heart and chew on it a little bit and say, man, what, what kind of persecution, what kind of conflict is in me as I'm choosing him? Because um, there should be there should be something on some level somewhere, there should be something that's going on inside of you as you're choosing him. Um, so, uh, There's going to be several things because you're, you're battling against your flesh. Yeah, 100%. Your yeah. flesh is not safe. Yeah. Your flesh is not safe. Your flesh is not and never will be saved. It won't. That's why we get a new body. We live according to the Spirit. Our souls are saved, not our flesh. Thirteen. Yeah, uh, thirteen says, "But to the degree that you were that you share in the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also with the revelation of His glory you may rejoice. You rejoice with exultation." Um, Joy. Any? That's what comes to mind, Danny. Mm -hmm. When you live through this, man, guys, and it, God knows I am not boasting because I'm. This is a painful lesson. This is a painful lesson that I've learned over and over and over, and I'm going to go through over and over. And I'm, I'm afraid that I, I believe in my heart that I'm not done going through it because I know I'm not there yet. But this is where our joy comes from because when we, when we realize that the trials that we go through are, 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 are being, he's putting us through and allowing us to, to, so that we grow through them, so, we, so that we really, really grow closer to God. Instead, we, we become very glad because then he allows us, he gives that ability to look back and go, wow, because of the trials, I'm, I'm taking my part of the suffering for Jesus. Because of the tri tribulation, because of the pain that I'm living through and the sacrifice, I'm joint heirs with Christ. Amen. And that's why he says, be glad. Amen. Amen. Um, anything else standing out to anybody? Anybody else see anything there? I, I don't know if it was, I think it was something Curtis said, but it made me think of in Romans chapter 1 where <coughs> the way God shows his love and his wrath is by just abandoning you to a lot of without yeah. him. So when we're not going through something, like he said, really have to ask ourselves, are we trying to be a friend of the world or, or are you really trying to grow in a walk? Because I don't know, I just feel like he's really talking to me right now. Mm -hmm. well, when he starts off, he says, but to, to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ it makes me think you know different times different things different things going on um, we're going to read some, I want to I, I really feel like I want to read some of these passages a couple of little testimonies out of here extreme degree um, different degrees different seasons different times different uh, challenges come against us to the degree um, whatever whatever the Lord has entrusted you with to be able to face and go through and walk through uh, at that time and it'll change. It'll change tomorrow, but different degrees. To but to the degree that you share the suffering of Christ, keep on rejoicing. So that so that also at the revelation of His glory, you may rejoice with exultation. Um, like Curtis was saying, joy. I'm sorry. I feel like he's no. Go ahead. I think that he wants me to share that you will continue to go through the same trial until you learn the lesson. <laughs> there you go. That's true. Yeah. That is absolute truth. I know it is because I feel it with all my heart. He's saying, you will continue in that same trial 
until you learn your lesson, son or daughter. Because I love you too much not to let you, not to make you go through it. Mm -hmm. And you'll continue and you can spend, if I've given you 70 years on this earth, you can spend 69 and a half of them on that same one trial until you learn. Mm -hmm. And I'm glorified. Amen. Amen. I completely agree with that. So I found out by going through that and then, okay, God, I got it. Well, he says, prove it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it. I'm going to run that one again. Test. And let's see how you handle it. Right. Test. No, do it again. I got it now. Oh. Okay, I got to get it and show you while I'm doing it. Got it. He, he, he will sift out the lip service. That's yeah. right. Amen. That's good. He will test our hearts. Amen. Um, and at the end of this, I believe he's, he, the words, um, you will have wonderful joy. Um, you will have the wonderful joy of sharing his glory when it is when it is displayed to all the world. That's in the future. Amen. So we're, we're not, we're, so much of the joy, so much of the gratification, we all want gratification, is, is going to be internal in this life. Mm -hmm. We're not going, people aren't going to look at us the way God does. If I could just share with you how much God's Spirit poured out on me this morning, guys, you wouldn't be able to contain yourself. That's what I had to tell you because it's so awesome when you feel God's presence. Nothing else matters. But the glory He's talking about right here will be when that day, when the whole world sees mm -hmm. Jesus' glory. Amen. And then the whole world will see that. You are real. Mm -hmm. And they will know, and your family will know, that your heart was genuine and true. Mm -hmm. That you truly were a representation of God. Mm -hmm. That you truly were filled with His Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's in the future. It's coming. And just on that same note right there, as, we, as you process through these verses, some, some of the things have been hit on already, but just are, that are highlighted in, in like the Greek and the verbs, is that that is a future tense um, but as it talks about just uh, as you go through sufferings and keep on rejoicing it's just that's that's like a present tense continual it's like this this idea of continue you're going continually you're going to face trial continually you're going to have to rejoice continually it's going to come against you continually you have to reflect on um on christ um <clears throat> can i i'm sorry one more thing so the back to the trial about having, he's going to continue to put you in that trial until you learn. Um, he just shared with me this morning what I experienced wasn't because I succeeded and passed the trial. You know why? He says it's because I chose to repent. See, when we fail that trial, we have an opportunity to either repent and recognize or become stubborn in our heart become lofty in our heart and prideful and say, uh, and not repent. Mm -hmm. Amen. And sometimes that repenting goes further than just repenting to God with, with all your heart. Amen. I mean, snot flying in tears and you on your face <laughs> repenting, sorry for yeah. God, meaning you mean it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it also means going to that person. Be this way, not just this way repenting, this way repenting. And then when you do that, it's not because we we pass the test. He loves us. He's more proud of us when we repent when we fail the test and we recognize who we are in Him and that we can't pass the test without His strength. Amen. Because we recognize we are still flesh. We are still sinners. Amen. My, I'm still just as big of a sinner as I was when I gave my life to Jesus years ago. The difference is, is through growing through trials, I've learned that I want to serve Him more than I want to serve my flesh. Amen. And when I repent, I've got to repent this way. Amen. And then he comes in like a flood because he loves us. Amen. He wants personal, real intimacy with us. Amen. Amen. How did we make it the last three weeks without Curtis? <laughs> Being a, hearing, hearing from the Lord. Hearing from the Lord. No, I mean, it's really good. It's really good truth. It really is. You're, yeah, you're on point. But, but there, in every room, there's going to be people. And I mean no offense, but let's all keep it real. The flesh on every one of us right now is going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
I'm watching. It ain't about me. All I'm saying is, whether you like it or not, I'm sharing what's on my heart. And when and tomorrow will come, and if I fall, I pray God gives me the heart to get on my face and, and surrender to Him Amen. and repent to Him. Because if He doesn't, I won't. That's right. Amen. And we're all the same that way. Amen. I mean, that's a really good truth that didn't even come to my mind that I'm really, really thankful that you brought up. And I hope that it does step on some toes to get us to think about what it means to repent when things are going on, when we're rebelling against Him and not walking with Him. That's a you know, critical and key part. So I'm real thankful that you brought well, it up. And it's hard to go this way and repent. Amen. I mean, don't get me wrong. Most people don't repent this way. Mm -hmm. They say a few things, lip service, like Donna said, and they're not, it's not the truth. It's not really in their heart if they're honest. They're not getting this right. And then some of us finally, thank God, it helps us and we get this right. But then we've got to realize that we've got to get there. this right. Yes. We've got to repent the people that we've hurt. Mm -hmm. Or even just held in our heart. Right. How, how hard is it to go to someone and say, you know what, I, I know I hurt you. I recognize that I did and I was wrong. And I told you for years I was wrong. And I'm sorry. That takes God doing that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't have a breakthrough in our life. Thank you, Lord. We don't get a breakthrough until we do this. Amen. We've done this with all our heart, but until we give repent to those who we've hurt this way, He's not moving. Amen. If you're still wanting a breakthrough and wondering, it's because there's someone that you haven't humbled yourself to to, to go to and repent to. That's right. Because you don't think you need to. As long as you it's do it with Him, I don't need to do it with them. And that's wrong. Amen. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. I believe you tell me that with all my heart. Amen. I've seen it in my own life. Amen. And then he's then his mercy comes in like yeah. a flood, man. Yes, it does. And you see, you find yourself somewhere just praising, worshiping, feeling his presence, restored. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, the NIV version of chapter of verse thirteen says, "But rejoice in so." In as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, meaning that you have to participate in the sufferings Amen. along with Christ. Amen. Right. Amen. Good point. Good point. Good point. Uh, Fourteen says, "If you're reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you." Uh, anything that stands out to us there? So reviled. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, what's he really talking about there? <coughs> the Lord's not giving me everything on this one, guys. I'm just saying, he's talking about if you're being reviled. But that's that's to be... Um, it's to be mocked. To be mocked. Is that also to mean to be, to be shunned? Yep. To be pushed away from? Mm -hmm. To be withdrawn from? Well, again, the NIV version of it says if you are insulted because of the name of Christ... You are blessed for the spirit of glory and God rest on you. Amen. So if you're insulted or <coughs> shunned away or whatever because you're a believer, then that's glory onto you. Amen. But in order to be shunned or insulted, you have to stand up for your beliefs. Right. right. You have to know. Right. Amen. That's mm -hmm. exactly why Doug shared what he shared. We have to. There, that's what we we got to figure out this game, guys. The game is, the game isn't that we win. The game is that God's glorified through our suffering because that reasonable service to Jesus is for us to serve Him, and therefore we will be, we will be persecuted because our Master was persecuted. That is our glory. That is the reward we receive on in this world. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, whenever it's a uh... I heard somebody say like one time something along the lines of like there's there's not enough adjectives you can use to describe what it's like to be in relationship with Christ Jesus to be able to follow after him and just on the outset hearing like oh to suffer for him that's where it's at you know it's really good but truly when you build in that relationship and you walk with him in that relationship and you stand like you're supposed to stand and you're reviled or persecuted uh, and people come against you and you build in that relationship with him, 
truly there's no there is no adjectives to describe how truly wonderful and truly intimate that relationship and your your relationship with him becomes at that point like Curtis was talking about this morning just being in uh, fellowship with him and worshiping him and uh, falling on his face before him and having this intimacy uh, you know it's it's hard to put that in words and as we uh, sum, you know submit to him and swallow our pride and, and examine ourselves and look at what it means to, to suffer uh, for his namesake to go through trials it puts us in a place where our intimacy with Him is at a place that people don't understand. Even people in the church sometimes don't understand what it means to have that intimate and personal and just that fellowship. I mean, even right now, I can't even think of enough adjectives to explain it. You just have to, you have to experience it. And when you experience it, you, 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 you're at a place where you just say, I just want more of that. I don't ever want to lose that. I don't want to walk away from that. I want to rest in that. I want to pursue that I want that and 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 that's what we have to we have to think and, and process through that's I mean that's why Peter spent so much time talking about almost the entire letter suffering for Christ I mean to uh, to uh, to bring people to know who Christ is that God's glorified but that our relationship with Him is, is built and, and that we may rejoice with exultation when He comes again, that we would be there and be, and have, there's a, 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 even the idea of like right now uh, in this, we, we have the Spirit of God and of, of, of Christ on us, the Holy Spirit on us right now. We have this special thing that happens to us right now. It's not just a future tense thing. There, there is the future tense that we'll be with Him and we'll be able to, uh, to rejoice with exultation at his future coming, but right now there's even a benefit and a reward. Um, as he says, the spirit of glory and of God rests on us. So, some good stuff. I want to read just a couple of uh, passages from here. And uh, I, and this isn't so much so that uh, you can look at your life, because uh, it's really, you, you re, we're going to read some of these things, and I'm talking, it, I'm just going to read like maybe one or two of them. Uh, and it's not to get us to think about like, oh, there's no part of me that's anywhere near um, sacrificial as maybe some of these people here would have been with their life because we're in a different place um, but the point is is that uh, for whatever reason the Lord I felt like wanted me to read some of this um, these verses that we read uh, I would I would highly encourage you uh, to just even if you can't memorize them word for word just to really commit to your mind that uh, there's a suffering that we're supposed to go through, and we're supposed to rejoice in that suffering as we are focused on Christ Jesus. Uh, one day we might find ourselves at a place similar to what these people found themselves. But the honest truth is, is that you might find yourself at Walmart tomorrow, and the Lord puts it on your heart to speak up about who Christ Jesus is. And for whatever mild persecution or a little bit of embarrassment you might feel, you might choose to do or not do it. I mean, that's just how it applies to us. So, anyway, hopefully I can make it through these without crying. Uh, they're just sort of real, um, real good. This, this whole book is just filled with uh, just little short, short testimonies. Um, so this one says, uh, <clears throat> the communists sold, and this is in the 70s. It says, girl, 16 or 17 years old in Asia in the 70s. It says, the communist soldiers had discovered their illegal Bible study. As the pastor was reading from the Bible, men with guns suddenly broke into the home, terrorizing the believers who had gathered there to worship. The communists shouted insults and threatened to kill the Christians. The leading officer pointed his gun at the pastor's head. Hand me your Bible, he demanded. Reluctantly, the pastor handed his Bible, his prized possession. With a sneer on his face, the guard threw the word of God on the floor at his feet. He glared at the small congregation. We will let you go, he growled, but first you must spit on this book of lies. Anyone who refuses will be shot. The believers had no choice but to obey the officer's orders. A, sol a soldier pointed his gun at one, of them, at one of the men, and he said, You first. The man slowly got up and knelt down by the Bible. Reluctantly, he spit on it, praying, Father, please forgive me. He stood up and walked to the door. The soldier stood back and allowed him to leave. Okay, you, the soldier said, nudging a woman forward. 
In tears, she could barely do what the soldier demanded. She spat only a little, but it was enough. She too was allowed to leave. Quietly, a young girl came forward. Overcome with love for the Lord, she knelt down, picked up the Bible. She wiped the spit off. What have they done to your word? Please forgive them, she prayed. The communist soldier put his pistol to her head, then he pulled the trigger. And that's her testimony. Um, this book is filled with people that were burned alive. Um, every kind of beating and torture you could think of. Um, every one of them has, not every one of them, but there's plenty of examples where people failed to stand like they should have. Um, but inevitably in every one of these, somebody was put to death because of their love for who Christ Jesus, uh, their, their love for Christ Jesus, who Christ Jesus was to them. And uh, this morning as I was reading over all of this, like I said, this guy Richard Wormbrand came to my mind, and as he talks about being in prison, um, in I think it's Romania, um, and even some stuff in here is quoted from him, just what it looks like for him to walk through his uh, these years in prison and the joy that he had for the Lord that even though he was getting beaten he still was thankful um, for Christ Jesus that he still rejoiced and even in what was going on with him he, he prayed that the guards would come to know who Christ Jesus was and uh I think it's important for us just to kind of maybe just be able to take maybe just that one little testimony and just think uh, bigger picture. I mean, because you think about like a 16 or 17 year old girl not bowing down and being willing to go through the ultimate suffering for Christ Jesus. It gives us a little bit to think about, like today when you're at Walmart, and maybe it's a little embarrassing to, to share about Christ Jesus, maybe not that big a deal. Amen. Amen. And here we have, a, like I said, a whole book filled with people that are burned alive, standing up, saying all you have to do is say, you don't believe in Jesus. That's all they had to do is say, I don't believe, and they could live. And they stand there and say, I will always believe. And one guy wraps the chains around himself. But we're called to suffer. And for us, it's hard to even swallow our pride and apologize to somebody or to be mildly inconvenient. That's what I say. Are you even mildly inconvenienced for the gospel? We're called to suffer. It shouldn't be strange to us. So, uh, hmm, this is going to be good. Think about the people that took the spit on the Bible. They spit on the word and got to leave. Think about them for a minute. What, were, what was going through their mind after they left the next day, the day after that, knowing that the little girl lost her life? See, what's in my heart is the little girl didn't suffer. She had a bullet go through her head and she was killed instantly. She felt no pain. What about the pain of all those that did spit on the word and had to live with that every day constantly after that? Amen. Okay, so God says to me that we, it is harder to live in our day and age right now, Danny, than it was for that girl or it was, or it is for a Christian that was mortared for believing in Christ that was stoned and their life was taken from them abruptly. You see, 
we don't live in a society where we will lose our life like that because we stand up for Jesus. We'll just get persecuted, maybe call some bad names, maybe whatever, but they're not going to take our life. It's not against the law to believe it's Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior right now in our life. It never has been. I would propose to y'all that he's telling me that it is harder for us to live every day having to make decisions to serve him and not follow a world than it is for a mortar, martyr who loses their life, who gets hung or gets shot in the head because they they, they have a gun in their head and says, well, denounce, denounce, uh, denounce Jesus or, or die. See, that's an easier decision than it is to have to make decisions on a daily basis for 30, 40, 50 years where the enemy is in me. The flesh. Mm -hmm. The world. You. Mm -hmm. See, because every day we're having, we, we have decisions we have to make uh, with, when we turn the television on, when we turn the radio on, when we get around groups of people and cliques, environments and cultures, maybe at work or somewhere out in, in the world where people are saying things and acting certain ways that do not glorify God, and we're choosing to either stay in that environment or walk away from it. See, that's harder to do, to walk away from it for righteousness' sake and suffer every day for 30, 40 years than for one moment where God can give you the heart to say, yes, I believe Jesus Christ is Lord, five dead. It's much harder to put your faith in Jesus every day for a lifetime when it's where, you're felt, where the enemy inside of us, the flesh inside of us, wants to slowly kill us every day. That's why, again, he says, think of, let's ask the question, what about those two that did spit on the Bible, that did get to continue to live their life? See, they're much more miserable than she ever was and ever will be because they don't know who they are. They're playing games with Christianity. They're playing games with God's word and what they believe, coming in fellowship with people that they know. Hallelujah, pray to God. They're playing games. Let's be careful. We're not playing games. Yeah. No, I'll give you that. I, I, uh, I think that those people having to make that decision to lay down their life ultimately is a, uh, it's one set of a difficult circumstance. And I think that I agree with you that here we have a completely different difficult circumstance that faces us. I don't want to lessen like what it means to have to lay down your life, um, but definitely here we have our own set of difficult circumstances and what it means. I, you're right, brother, but listen, thank you. I have to lay my life down every day. Yeah. No, really. Yeah, but... No, no, really. No, what are you I afraid of? Yes and no. I mean... It's too is, it, is it better to die and go into eternity for God like that and spend eternity? Or is it harder to live 60, 70 years and have to die every day to yourself? But the, in both circumstances, though, it's in both circumstances, there's, chance, there's the opportunity to, to, uh, to not do that, to not lay down your life, to not lay down your life. Um, and, and to, in here, in... in present day United States of America it can be easier at times to okay I won't watch that even though your heart isn't always into it you say okay I won't do it I know I should and I'm going to go ahead and do what I should do where over here if you make a choice it's ultimate um, and I think that's that for me as I process through. Right, I think but, both. But would you agree that you're, that's because you're basing that on you're putting too much value on your life? I, but I think everyone. To, I mean, I, I think that's the human side. Yeah. That, that's the flesh, yeah. though. That's not God. Yeah. It's God. Jesus said, "Those who will lose their life for my sake will save it." Um, I totally agree. You I'm just saying. I mean? The God's just, perspective is: I'm not. If you're trying to protect and save your life, you got the wrong perspective. One hundred percent. 
I, 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 I 100% see what you're saying. Uh, and I, I just think that both uh, instances uh, speak of a significant sacrifice. Right. Well, I'll, I'll tell you real quickly in a business term, stock. Okay. I put God's word on the back of my business cards. Okay. Until you've been in a situation where you lost five or ten thousand dollars, you lost a deal because you got God's name on it on a business card. You have suffered persecution. That's 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 a lot of persecution in our world that we live in. You're talking about money that pays the bills that allows my family to eat. I've had people come in and go, well, aren't you afraid of losing business because it says that on the back of your cards? Because they know in their right mind that there's people who are going to not want to do business with me because they know who I am because of... Man, when, when you put Jesus on there, see, you can get away with saying God bless, God bless because people just throw that around and don't mean anything. But when you but when you put Jesus's words on your card and you start and you put yourself out there and you're talking to somebody who has the ability to sign a contract and give you lots of money or not, now you know what real persecution is because you live with that every day. I'm not afraid of dying because of the joy that's in me, Danny. Mm -hmm. That fear of when, when you're not afraid of dying, it's much easier to lose your life because you proclaim because you we all know that if you denounce Jesus, if you tell if you say I don't believe in Jesus anymore so that I can continue to live this life, you need to go back to step one. Your perspective's wrong. You don't know who you are. You don't know. You don't understand. You don't have near the wisdom you thought that you did. Because wisdom says, lose this life for my sake. Yeah, that's some truth there. They were never, we were never meant to prosper in this world. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's some good truth. There's some good truth. So there. I had, so I made a choice because I love God so much that I, you know what? If I hand that card to one person, leave it on their door, and they read it, and I never meet them, but it's, it opens their heart. One day, I'll, maybe I'll get some crowns because of that. I'll have no idea. Mm -hmm. I have no idea if it's going to be one or if it's going to be 100,000 of them. I don't know over my lifetime. Mm -hmm. But that's why I do it. Because Jesus said do it. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's some good truth. That's some good so, truth. Some good, yeah, tr some good mean, truth that you want. But you're right. I mean, I, I, you're, I get it. I mean, we, nobody wants to die. I get that. I'm not trying to be all... I'm just trying to share what the Lord is sharing with me. But he was like, think about the two that spit on my word. But the, those two that spit on the word might be making business cards down the road. Yeah, that's right. You know. All right, let's, let's pray real quick. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for just the things you taught us today, Father. Let us take it with us in our heart, Father, that we can uh, take and do what you've called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.